So welcome everyone to Tuesday night talk. And this evening, our topic is harmonizing body and soul. And our speaker tonight, Vinod Mangalpara, is a medical doctor. So I can't think of a, a more interesting speaker than one whose work has been on healing the body, but his love and practice has been about the soul, about the spirit and spirituality. So before we begin, let's have a meditation so that we can relax and just let go of the day. Just take a few moments now and we'll meditate together. And let's be aware of the physical body. If there's any tension in the body anywhere, let's breathe into that place and relax the muscles. Relax the head and neck. Relax the shoulders. And arms. Let go. Melt into your seat, allowing the hips to relax. And be aware of the breath. And now let's focus our attention on the one that is conscious, that energetic presence that we call life force or soul. Imagine being the driver of this car called the body. And the eyes are the windows for the soul to see and perceive the world around it. And I'm also aware that I'm a loving, peaceful being I gravitate to peace. I can emanate this quality or vibration of love. And I can appreciate so much that's in my life right now even amidst any challenges. When I'm aware of being a soul, I energize the self. giving it the ability to make choices.
And just imagine an orb of light surrounding your heart. Just healing the heart and an orb of light surrounding the head, cooling the head. So a light to warm the heart and a light to cool the head. And now become aware of the room where you're sitting and bringing that relaxation and calm to you and thank you for taking that time for yourself and for creating a, a wonderful presence for this talk. So every Tuesday night, we have a different speaker for our Tuesday night talk. Tonight's topic is harmonizing body and soul. And again, our speaker is Vinod Mangopara, who is a medical doctor by profession. And he is very um, compassionate and passionate about building his spiritual awareness, balancing both heart and head, um, using his analytical skills and his um, heartfelt compassion um, to serve others on so many levels. So I like to call these kinds of souls double doctors, ones that can heal the body and also can heal or create positive vibrations for souls. So, Vinod, uh, I don't know if you're there, but I have you, because there's two Vinodes and I don't know which one to spotlight. <laughs> okay. The one with the picture. <laughs> <laughs> For a minute there, I thought you were being shy. No, but I'm so glad that you're with us and you, you always make us think when you speak. I really appreciate what you offer to us. And so thank you so much for being here this evening. Om Shanti. Thank you, Om Shanti. Uh, yes, this is a very um, easy topic but many small details that we need to know. Uh, so I have made a, uh, a PowerPoint slide, so I'm going to use that. And then uh, we will all soak in to understand this subject very well. So let me start this uh, sharing. So the topic is harmonizing soul and the body. <clears throat> um, I, um, I hope and know that most of us who are in this room, they know that we, have, we are two entities, the body and the soul. And uh, <clears throat> they work together. And so how do they harmonize? Uh, what happens when disharmony occurs, what are the causes, and how, uh, what we can do about uh, creating that harmony again. So we will talk about this. Uh, so I have uh, um, written a caption that the harmonizing the soul and the body is like experiencing uh, suk. It is a Hindi word, suk, uh, which is actually uh, 
combination of health, wealth, happiness. So how do we create that health, wealth, and happiness while we, the soul, are in this body? That's what we will learn. And uh, the soul has its own characteristics and the body has its own. And so these are, sometimes they are quite opposite to each other in many aspects. And so how do they come together and work? That we need to know. <clears throat> uh, like you know, the body is like an instrument that follows and the soul is the one who decides and experiences, etc. So these are some of the uh, salient features of both. The soul is silent, the soul is pure, happy, knowledgeful, powerful, blissful, and soul is loveful. So uh, these are the seven characteristics that we uh, spiritual students know about the soul. And body has its own very different type of uh, personality or characteristics. It's an organized structure consisting of many cells, organ organisms, molecules, uh, etc. cetera, uh, as opposed to the simplicity of the soul, which is souls very simple versus bodies like organized thing. Uh, soul is peaceful by nature, inert, and versus the body will interact, will reproduce, will grow, all that. So there is a, there is a difference. Um, <clears throat> so growth, development, adaptation to the environment, how the- Oh, the node. How the energy is processed by the body. These are all different ways. And the soul, how the energy uh, is processed by the soul is totally different. Uh, that is a little bit out of this subject, so, but I'll go on to the next one. So these are the two different uh, entities. And so the question is, can there be harmony uh, between the uh, different entities having sometimes opposing personalities? And if so, who plays the bigger role? These are the questions. Um, yes, harmony is, uh, is there because uh, you know, we see happiness, peace, wherever we see happiness, peace, uh, love, we say that this is harmonious environment. So there is harmony. And when there is sorrow, anger, etc., we know that they say there is a disharmony going on. So, but we need to have a broader picture as to what is actually harmony and is it a fluctuating event or it is something that is there and then it changes. So we need to know that. Um, <clears throat> now the question is who plays the bigger role that I will just touch on a little bit, the soul and the body. In the spiritual language, we consider the soul as a living being, living light, versus the body is, we, although body is a living organism, in a spiritual language, you can, we can say that that's a relatively non-living. So the two together. And so who would play the active role? Of course, the soul, but the body will do what it has to do in any situation, no matter what situation is there, the body will act the same way. So it is predictable versus soul has a creativity. And so soul uh, is different. And so that plays a bigger role. And so harmony is all about how the two different entities, people come together and create something very beautiful. That's, that's harmony. 
the, the most essential uh, point about harmony is they never lose their core values. Uh, they remain what they are because if uh, one loses its own core value and tries to act like the other, there is a, uh, a cloning or monotonous uh, a event happens. So, so uh, the diversity is lost and the uh, beauty is lost. And so harmony is like any music. Uh, the different musicians and instruments are being played, but they together, they create a nice uh, music. So that's the harmony. And so body will sing its own character, own uh, song where the, the soul will uh, play its own song. Example, uh, the body will say, I want to eat. The soul will say, I need energy. And they together, when they work together, that's a harmony. So let's go to the next one. Um, what happens uh, when uh, we look at our own example of our life, uh, human life, soul has a very big cycle. Soul is not uh, pertaining to one cycle. Soul has a bigger cycle. So we let us try to understand what happens in our life. When we are, when we are in a young age, when we are children, generally speaking, we have uh, we are carefree, uh, our world is full of uh, wonders and we don't have any worries. And when we grow up, we have stresses of the life that we go through. And in the end, uh, near the uh, uh, death or the old age, we have to deal with the disease, weakness of loss of uh, autonomy, et cetera. So we can see a pattern there that initially we are uh, we have a beauty, our existence of uh, we, the soul and our body, we have a beauty. And as we progress, we slowly uh, decline or degradation occurs. And in the end, we lose that. And so there is a phase when we, are, we have a harmony and then we become less harmonious. And in the end, we become disharmonious. And so what actually happens is the, in a childhood, the soul is untampered. Soul has not experienced the worldly uh, problems, etc. So soul is relatively pure. And so there is a harmony and so there's a beauty. When, as we grow, the soul begins to forget its own identity and uh, begins to behave like body and then uh, disharmony occurs. So there is, a, there is a cycle from harmony to disharmony that I want to explain by this slide. So now, what is a world of harmony? How we the soul are when we have total harmony? How is our world when we have harmony? How we, the soul are, and how our world is. Um, the soul is pure. It has all the virtues. And each virtue, you can imagine all the virtues that one can have, all the virtues are there in the soul in the beginning. And each virtue 100% no negativity at all. They are uh, totally nonviolent and very pure code of conduct. They follow every uh, norm of the society. That's how the souls are We're at the beginning. And that type of the soul's behavior create the harmony in the world. And how the world is as a result of souls such characteristic. The, the world is very beautiful. Uh, 
we can call it as like a heaven. Most beautiful uh, phase of the uh, combination of soul and body. Perfect health, no disease, no unnatural death, abundance of everything that one can imagine, comfort. Uh, there's perfect harmony between the different elements of the nature also. There is no storms, no earthquakes, no volcanoes, everything is perfect. Uh, even the animals, they uh, are harmonious. Uh, they behave harmoniously with each other. Uh, the lion and the lamb can drink the water off the same pond. And, and such is the world. And the, that is because the soul takes on the highest uh, characteristic, complete with all virtues and pure, no vices, etc. So what causes disharmony, as we uh, learn, when we when the soul forgets that it is a that when I the soul forget that I am a soul and I start to behave like a body, then this harmony starts. So what happens when I begin to behave like a body? I have these five vices: ego, lust, attachment, anger, and greed, and many other. Uh, little vices that go along with that. Uh, like you can see in the table, for example, for the attachment, we have fear and worry uh, that there are smaller uh, minor vices that are like attachment. Uh, blame, revengeful anger. So I can have, for example, if you take an example of the anger, uh, I can control myself and say that I'm not angry. I don't show anger, but I have this revengeful feeling or thoughts inside that is as good as the anger, actually. Or I can say, I can blame this person that it is because of so-and-so uh, person, then that is also a very subtle form of the anger. If I dislike something, I like this, I don't like that. It is a very, very subtle form of the anger and so on and so forth. <clears throat> and so all these little characteristics that we develop as we, the soul come into the body and that begins to create disharmony and we slowly progress towards a totally disharmonious stage. We become old from new, we become, we come into bondage from being free we, we were initially rich and abundant and we become like a poor. We begin to look for the happiness here and there. In fact, we are total, we are the source of the happiness. So what we forgot. And so we begin to look for happiness and we become poor that way. Uh, we lose our peace. So that's, that's the cause for the uh, disharmony. Uh, now, how does this occur? How does the uh, how does the anger, for example, will bring about disharmony into the body? How does that occur? Versus, how does the peace will cause harmony in the body? How does the uh, my being of peaceful translate into the body. So this is an important slide. How the awareness brings about the change. So um, it's a very busy slide, but I will describe it. Uh, so there's something called as a sun scar, which is a deep impression. Whatever I see, feel, hear, it is recorded in me as a sanskar. And then many birth sanskars are deep inside me, the soul. 
these sanskars are the operators, main operators of everything that I do see, hear, feel, create, everything. So the triggers, the sanskars are triggered by external environment and from something inside as well. And so this, once the sanskar is triggered, it will lead to awareness. For example, if I see a, a beautiful flower, uh, it triggers an awareness of beauty inside me. So uh, my awareness is of that of beauty. And along with that awareness comes a feeling, that happy feeling. I see a flower, I feel happy. So that is my stage. That feeling is my stage. And that stage leads to what is called as vritti or attitude, which is actually the same feeling that fills my entire internal environment, or it, it creates an internal atmosphere inside me. So there's happy feeling inside me totally. It covers everything that is inside. And so what happens is uh, when, when I have this happy feeling, every thought that will emerge from me will pass through this happy environment before it goes out. So every thought is colored by happiness. So every thought is a happy thought actually. Similarly, anything that comes within is colored by the same uh, attitude or vritti. If, uh, if I see a disturbing uh, scene, it will go through this attitude of happiness and then I will perceive that as a not that disturbing event. I will see it as a, as a uh, more a gentler event. So that stage of that vritti is a very important to understand. It also uh, colors my the way I look at everything. It, it colors my intellect. My intellect is the, the faculty of I, the soul, that visualize, that see. So you can imagine how my attitude can actually bind me, my aware, my uh, everything that I do, everything that I perceive, everything that I think, it is all colored by that same vritti. And then based on that is also my action. My action depends on my vision or, or the way I look at the world and the way I perceive that and the way I uh, act, uh, way I think. So my thought, my awareness leads to, this is how the thought occurs. My awareness leads to the thought and the thought will lead to the action. Action leads to the creation of the world. Uh, so whatever we see around us is a result of uh, this cascade that we are seeing. This is how we have created this world, all the buildings, the roads, the houses, the, the fields, the plants, the flowers, everything that we have uh, created around us is the result of this. And our social norms and uh, uh, our environment in total depends on that. And then in the end, whatever action that I create, it results into a response from outside, it also results an impact inside. And that impact inside is actually a sanskar. So if I uh, see a beautiful flower and create this uh, uh, a stage of happiness and uh, an attitude of happiness, and I smile looking at this flower, that is creating an impression with, within me as uh, a smile in response to this beauty. 
or looking at this flower. So next time I see a flower, that smile occurs inside me. So that becomes a stimulus for the next action. Okay, so how does this relate to our body? <clears throat> uh, we have seven core virtues this, as a soul, and then many other uh, virtues that go along with them. Uh, for example, we have peace. I'm a peaceful soul. And uh, so I have virtues of lightness, uh, um, clarity, etc. <clears throat> so these different virtues are, uh, they have an effect on the body systems. And uh, this is in a spiritual language, uh, spiritual world that I have learned this and not as a medical doctor. And uh, there may not be um, a scientific uh, proof of this, but uh, there is a, a proof by example, uh, you can see. Uh, the knowledge has effect on knowledge and uh, uh, the accompanying virtues will have effect on the nervous system, the peace on respiratory system, the purity on excretory system, love on cardiovascular system, bliss on endocrine system, power on musculoskeletal, and, and uh, the sukh or the happiness on the digestive system. And uh, there is a evidence by the, um, uh, not as a scientific evidence, but we can see that uh, the person who lacks, uh, who lacks peace will have uh, higher uh, disturbed breathing. Uh, anxious person, for example, will have a disturbed breathing. Uh, Somebody who is uh, who feels weak, powerless within, they would have more problem with the musculoskeletal system, and so on and so forth. It is it is generally seen that the people who are very happy uh, and enthusiastic, they have a very good digestive system. Their digestion is very very uh, perfect. So there is a relationship between how the soul is and how the body works. And so uh, that's a busy slide here. I recommend not, not read it. So the science, what, is, what does the science say about all this? Science has definitely uh, uh, known that there is something called as a psychosomatic disease. In fact, the science now knows that most of the diseases, including uh, the accident, the road accident, are psychosomatic disease. Psychosomatic. So it's something uh, that if I'm anxious or type of personality, I would have a higher chance of accident and so forth. Uh, we have very well known that person who is type A personality will have a higher chance of heart attack. Uh, and there is a new uh, subject called uh, psychoneuroimmunology, which is a uh, upcoming branch of medicine. And uh, this uh, subject studies the, um, um, the effect of the psyche or the mind on the immune system and on the uh, nervous system of the body because the way the, the nervous system works is that they uh, produce neurotransmitters. And the way the uh, uh, immune system works is they produce what is called as a cytokines. These are chemicals that are released from the uh, immune cells. And these uh, chemicals, they protect, uh, they have various functions, but the, mainly these functions are positive. They are to protect the body, uh, they uh, help heal, etc. They are not harmful. Um, 
But when we have a psychological problem, when our, uh, our mind, our soul uh, does not have, uh, bear those uh, seven um, core values and begin to have anxiety, uh, anger, et cetera, then what happens is it will also lead to uh, what is NS and CNS. CNS is central nervous system, NS is nervous system. So, um, anxiety, for example, will lead to uh, some cytokines in the immune system. And these are called as a, uh, a pro inflammatory uh, cytokines. And they create uh, a situation there. Basically, these. Uh, those kind of chemical, they help healing, but here, as a result of the anxiety, what happens is these cytokines leads to disease state. And many examples are there. Inflammatory bowel disease, peptic ulcer disease, anxiety, even HIV and cancer. These are stress-related conditions uh, that comes as a result of these, the uh, effect of the mind onto the immune system. Immune system goes down and then you can become prone to develop uh, infections such as HIV. HIV can never occur in a person with a strong immune system uh, because uh, the, the person's immunity has to go down for that virus to affect them. It is such a weak virus that if you have strong immunity, it will not come near you, even if you touch it or nothing happens. So that's what the science knows about, uh, about uh, the, how the uh, uh, mind or the soul has the effect on the body. But uh, spiritually, there's a lot more. Um, let's go to the topic of how uh, these, how we can create the harmony, how we the soul can create the harmony. So uh, the spiritual wisdom says, consider yourself to be a soul and stay in remembrance of the father. This is a, like a mantra, a statement. Um, so, what I, the soul, have to do to create that harmony again, to create that beautiful world once again. First, I need to be a soul. Second, I need to be in remembrance with the Father, the Supreme Soul, so that I can take on the good characteristics and I can become the elevated human being and I can create a beautiful world. So that's the essence of that uh, spiritual wisdom that, that is there on the screen. Consider yourself to be a soul and stay in remembrance of the father. Now, how do you, how do you consider yourself as a soul? Your mind, um, you the soul, have three faculties, the mind, intellect, and uh, heart. Heart is actually a mind. And there's uh, another faculty called sanskar, which is a uh, uh, impression. These are the three faculties. But sanskar is just uh, like a dormant uh, a characteristic that is hidden inside you. It can be grouped together into the mind. It's like a memory. So your mind says, I'm a body. Your intellect says, I cannot visualize or imagine myself as a soul because I see myself as a body. And then heart says, I believe I'm a body and I have felt my body always. So then how do you consider yourself as a soul? So let's take a pause for half a minute and just think about the answer how I, the soul, can consider myself as a soul when, 
when my mind says, no, I'm a body. My intellect says, no, I can't imagine. And heart has always felt all this worldly emotion. So it doesn't know. Just uh, think of an answer and then I will go to the next one. We'll take a pause of half a minute. All right, here's the answer. This is the answer. This is the soul, the cub. And the way the cub has to see into the mirror. But what does the cub has to see? Has to see his father. So you have to see your father to know that you are a soul. Because cub, I know I'm a cub. The cub looking in the mirror will see, okay, I'm a cub. The only way the cub will know that I'm a soul is the cub will look into the pond, his father. So this is a picture from, uh, I think Lion King. It's a beautiful picture. So that's what we have to do. We have to, no father first. Then only we can be so conscious. Then only we can know we are so. So first, know the father. The father of this body is one and the father of the soul is another. So all of us are souls. And so our father is one supreme soul. That's the father. The one who everybody remembers in their prayers. The one who liberates us from the sorrow. The one who is the ocean of peace, purity, power, happiness. The one who has knowledge of everything. Who knows where I came from. Who knows where I will go, everything he knows. And the one who gives us unconditional love, no matter how I am, even if I don't believe in him, he still gives me that love. He's still my father and he's the purifier. So that's the father we have to know. Unless and until we know that father, we can never understand we are the soul because we, are like him. And so, and when we look at ourselves, we cannot even know how we are originally. So when we know father, we know this is, oh, this is how I am. And then I can then begin to have soul consciousness and then begin to travel my journey towards that uh, uh, beautiful world that I will create. So that's the essential most first step. Unless and until I know father, I cannot move forward spiritually. Spiritually. So uh, once I know that I'm a soul, I'm a soul, uh, what is the proof? that I am a soul. You know, I can just say in my mind that I'm a soul, but that doesn't make me a soul. Or I can just visualize the image of a star and say, I'm a soul. That doesn't make me soul. The proof is the result of when I consider myself as a soul, what's the result? I should feel that eternal peace, happiness, and love that I had never received from this world. 
I have received a lot of love from my parents, my friends, etc. But that love that you know, uh, that you would feel as a soul is very elevated love that you cannot uh, feel in this world. So that's proof. Very elevated uh, love, happiness, and peace that you feel. And you feel very contented. You feel that your search is over. No further looking around. You, you had been running here and there for peace and for different things. And all of a sudden, all that search ends and you feel rested. And, and uh, of course, you feel bodiless because now you have realized that you are a soul. You do feel completely different, separate from this body. And you feel that you are unaffected by the, the time, sound, actions, whatever is going around in this world. So not that you become callous of what is happening in the world, but whatever, happen, whatever is happening in the world does not affect you negatively. So that's the proof of having a soul conscious stage. And that stage comes from knowing father. And so the number two uh, effort. So once I know I'm a soul, then what I have to do? Then I have to remember. As a soul, I have to remember. I cannot remember God or father as a body, uh, which we have always done in the past that you try to remember, you, uh, you use a rosary to remember, uh, you go to temples, you sing, but all that remembrance is as a body consciousness. So that remembrance does not cause a uh, spiritual contact. Why it is important to have remembrance? What is the importance of remembering father? And so I have, I have noted down a few things. First thing, when you remember, you become clean, you become pure, pure vessel. Next thing, you get the knowledge, virtues, and powers. You get filled with these things. Knowledge, virtues, and powers. You cannot be virtuous or powerful or knowledgeful by studying anything here in this world or going to any uh, place, you cannot. Because this, uh, these virtues and powers are actually deep within you. It is all hidden gems within you and they awakened, they're awakened when you come in contact, spiritual contact with the Supreme Father. So, Unless and until my, uh, for example, my mercy, merciful attitude, unless and until it is awakened by the Supreme Soul, I will not become merciful. Outwardly, I may become merciful, but inside I'm still the same. So awakening of my virtues and powers happen. They're dormant, deep sitting inside me. Um, I become unlimited. That's, that's a huge one. So I, living in this body, I have limits. I cannot do the, I can do this. I cannot do this. I cannot tolerate this. I cannot deal with this. So many cannots are there. But does the soul have that limitation? No, because soul is unlimited just like the father, limitless powers are within the soul. And those, uh, those are the examples of the, uh, the great people of this world are the examples of the, those souls who had become unlimited partially though, 
and achieve the great, great success. Um, um, the great uh, mountain climbers uh, climb the Mount Everest because they did have this spiritual seed inside and they had some spirituality and they become that powerful and determined that I can climb Mount Everest. And all the big examples of uh, the great souls of this, the world are the examples of that awakening of the, uh, their powers and becoming limitless. There's nothing that will stop them. So that uh, limitlessness comes as a result of me becoming a soul and remembering the father. A uh, very important fact about remembering uh, father is uh, I become this de de scatter. Right now I'm scattered all over. I don't know where I'm going. I don't know what I'm doing. I don't know what my destination is, what will happen, what will happen next year. I probably can't know what is next year, but what's after that, after that, I have no idea. I know, I don't know where I'm going. So my destiny, my destination, my journey becomes very clear to me when I become a soul. I know exactly where I'm going, what I need to do. And so that is very empowering actually, because I stop losing my energy here and there. And my total energy is now focused on what I really need to do. And so that, that itself makes me very powerful. And uh, the uh, many dilemmas goes away and I feel rested. I can make decisions like this. Uh, my, uh, my, my ability to decide what I want to do becomes really sharp. <clears throat> so these are the, uh, some of the um, importance of uh, becoming so conscious and knowing the father. And how do I have to remember? Uh, not just remember one time a day or twice a day. It has to be a constant remembrance, constant remembrance, because um, um, we, the spiritual student, we say that uh, our uh, journey is a lot bigger than the journey of this body. Body has a uh, beginning point and end point. Body will uh, begins at the birth, ends at the death. But the soul continues on. Soul goes on and on and on. And so many birth experiences uh, are inscripted or are stored within me, the soul. And so these uh, different experiences, and most of them are uh, uh, negative. Because remember, in the initial uh, part of the discussion, we looked at the slide where we were initially a ch child and then we become adult and then old age and how we become from uh, slowly become uh, lose our uh, purity and become uh, more impure and so uh, that many birds um, impressions are stored within me and all of them are uh, negative or useless all my positive and pure impressions and virtues are deep down within me. And to come to that, I have to get rid of all the, the, the negativity that I have filled with inside me. And uh, for that, I need to have, um, I need to utilize this body. And I know that this body has limitations and I don't know whether I'm going to die next month or a month after, who knows? So I have a very short time and within a short time, I need to uh, utilize every second or whatever time I have to uh, bring, uh, to remove all the uh, negativity and emerge my positivity. Then I would, I would emerge as an elevated uh, being and then I will be uh, taking part into creation of something beautiful. So that's why constant remembrance of the father is highly important.
And there are many different ways to do that. You know, some activities where you don't require to use your intellect, you can use those. Example, eating, when you're eating, uh, you can remember. When you're walking around, you can remember. When you're driving, you can remember. Of course, when you're operating or doing some work or something like that, you will have to remain focused to what you're doing. But in between, if whenever you have, when you have a chance, you have to remember. Uh, and remembrance of the father as uh, the one uh, with all the relations is very important too. So you remember him not just as a, he's a God and I'm the uh, child. You have to remember him uh, through all relations uh, that we experience in this world. Uh, I have, uh, you know, father, mother, brother, friend, teacher. And so all these relations I have to experience through God. I have to remember God as my teacher, as my brother, as my uh, friend. And this is, this is uh, what I have learned as a spiritual student that, uh, uh, that you develop all the relations with father. And uh, that way you can easily that way you can easily remember him. Otherwise, what happens is uh, if I have attachment to my beloved in this world, then I will remember father fine, but then I will have half the time remembrance of my beloved in this world. <clears throat> and so that will distract me and I will, uh, lose the valuable time. Not that you cut off your relations with the, uh, your worldly relations, but once you create a relation with the father, then you come back and have the same relations with the, your worldly relatives. And you would, you would see that you can uh, have a better relationship with them. If, if God is my friend, then I, I know how to be a friend better than any other friend that I can learn from. And then when I interact with my worldly friend, I will be a best friend of that friend. That's how it works. So create a relation with God and then you interact with your worldly relatives. And then of course, uh, you remember father with good feeling, not crying, you know, that's the one uh, because good feeling you're, you're trying to contact or uh, have a spiritual connection with the supreme uh, a soul who is the ocean of happiness. So there's no question of crying or, or uh, feeling sad about connection. When you feel sad, actually you are bringing yourself down to um, a level where you cannot connect with God. With a heavy mind, you cannot connect with God because heavy mind, you are now looking at yourself as a, as a body because your mind, your uh, heart with uh, a negative uh, uh, emotions and your body, this is all physical including the mind with negative emotions, that's physical. So to rise above that physical, you have to have that happiness and peace. Then you can rise above that and then you can connect with God. And so uh, I brought up that no crying because uh, you know, in old days before spirituality, I would go to temple sometimes with a heavy mind and try to connect with the God. And, uh, and I, I would feel good for a short time, but outside, as soon as I step out of the temple, I'm back to square one. So because I did not connect with God, it was just the external effect that uh, made me happy for a short time. Uh, so number one was uh, um, consider yourself as a soul. Number two, remember father. 
And number three, my what else I have to do to uh, create that harmony, to become that elevated being so that I can create a beautiful world. What else I have to do? I have to imbibe all the virtues. I have to imbibe uh, the powers and the knowledge. I have to be a student of the God. And, and uh, these are some of the codes of the conduct that I do uh, that keep me focused and that keep me uh, connected <clears throat> with God. And I become that being. And so number one is Amritvela connect, uh, where I connect. Amritvela is the time of the um, time of the, the early morning hour uh, where um, it is my best chance to connect with the God. All of the time of the day, I can connect, but, uh, but the, at the time of the Amritvela, which is between 2 a.m. and 5, 5 a.m., 2 to 5, this is the best time when I can connect. And there are many reasons. Uh, uh, the biggest being at that time, uh, my, my body, my mind, my um, emotions are all silent. And then my subconscious is more awake. My deeper consciousness is more awake at that time. So I have a higher chance of connecting. Uh, and so many other reasons are there. Uh, like ambience is nice. Uh, quiet, not many thoughts are then out, outside that will distract you, and so on and so forth. And one of the slides that we saw where we talked about the uh, vritti or the uh, attitude, how the, the, the thought uh, leads to uh, creation or act, uh, action. Uh, so vritti is uh, one of the uh, uh, stages. Uh, a feel internal and where uh, our internal environment is uh, full of a certain type of the uh, elevated emo uh, a feeling, not emotion, but the feeling, like happy feelings, etc. So that vritti is connected with the atmosphere outside. Actually, I'm connected out with the atmosphere through that, and so. If all the souls are thinking positive, for example, when we are meditating together, we are thinking positive or we, our mind is silent. And so the environment of that uh, place is really high because of that, because uh, the vibration that goes from me to the outside environment is very peaceful. So that is one other advantage why, how I can connect with uh, us with the Supreme Soul easily in the time of the Amrit Vela. Second is Murli, listening to the higher, uh, listening to elevated thoughts. That's the uh, essence of that. Uh, so throughout the day, we listen to so many things, uh, TV programs, uh, chit chat, gossips, so many things, news, etc. And uh, most of them are not very useful um, spiritually and uh, negative. You know, you hardly can find something positive in those things. Uh, but uh, Murli is the uh, something that we hear uh, uh, from the Supreme Soul and very elevated. Uh, these are very elevated wisdom that we hear or study. <clears throat> And so give yourself uh, something uh, good to eat. That's what, it, that's what it is. So as a body, we always look for something uh, nourishing to eat. Same way our, our soul needs nutrition. So where does it get it from? It doesn't get from a TV or listening to something, no. Or song, no. The uh, <clears throat> elevated, uh, thoughts is what the soul needs to get that nourishment. 
and that comes from uh, what we call as a murli. <clears throat> and uh, so that's our uh, regular practice to study that. And then uh, attention through the day, as, I, as my day progresses, what I do, I have to keep a self check. What am I doing? As am I uh, going out of line, et cetera? I need to keep control on that. So throughout the day, attention. And then at the end of the day, I have to honestly look back and see if I caused any uh, disturbance, did I cause anybody uh, sorrow? Uh, I need to check that. And so why it is important? Because when you uh, assess yourself, then you can, uh, you can begin the process of realization and then you can begin the process of change. Unless and until uh, you realize you cannot change. Other person can tell me uh, that you need to be like this or like that and I will not change. I need to know. I need to tell myself that this is how I am, this is how, uh, this is how I did, and then a change will occur. So before going to bed, honestly assess uh, yourself and maybe write down uh, what you did, good or bad, and uh, reveal it to the Supreme, Supreme Father and, uh, and then uh, go to bed. <clears throat> Not with the heavy heart though, because whenever you are connected with the Supreme Father, you are connecting with a, uh, the source of all the uh, treasures and happiness. So the moment you think about him, even though you're describing a, a bad incident or some sorrowful incident, you're connecting with that source of the happiness. You need to have that happy feeling as you do that. Just like a small child telling their the parents uh, and then get comforted. So that's how we do that. <clears throat> um, pure relations, pure food, pure thoughts and pure company. So these are the uh, some uh, practices that keep you in connection with God. Pure relation means celibacy, pure food means the food that is prepared in remembrance of the God mainly the food that is pure, um, <clears throat> mainly prepared in, in, um, in remembrance of the God. Of course, uh, you know, we practice in, uh, vegetarian diet, plant-based diet. That is the, uh, uh, what we call as a sattvic diet or the diet that uh, can uh, enhance the spirituality. <clears throat> and there are medical reasons uh, to avoid the non-vegetarian non diet. Uh, and we can, we, I'm not going to go into that, but we can, uh, if there is any question I can answer. Pure thoughts, this is important. Nobody is looking at me as to how, how I'm thinking. So when I look at somebody, what kind of thoughts are gen generated inside that I need to be very watchful. So always there has to be a self check I need to have a pure feeling and, uh, and a good wish for everybody. Pure feeling, good wishes. These are important uh, um, uh, tools whenever you are interacting with the others. Pure feeling is what happens in me when I see something outside, what type of feeling occurs. And, and uh, a good wish is what type of thoughts I'm generating towards other a person or the incident. So both them have to be very uh, good. And then when the feelings are pure, I'm not taking any negativity from anybody. When the thoughts are good, I'm not giving out negativity to nobody. So my interaction is very good. <clears throat> and then pure company. Pure company is, uh, is actually uh, company with God, with the Supreme Soul. Because look around and, and find a pure company and see if you can find that. Some impurity will be there. 
doesn't mean that you look at somebody and say they, they are impure. No, you yourself are also impure, but you connect with the purest of the pure and so that you can purify yourself and then you can have a pure interaction with the others. That's the intention. Not to uh, look down upon anybody, but pure company. Pure company will bring all the, the goodness that we earlier uh, described. So these are the efforts towards bringing that harmony between the soul and the body. Let me see if there's any further slide. Okay, yes. So we need to understand our weakness and, and uh, weaknesses and powers. And the weaknesses are all the vices that we earlier talked about. The, the five vices and their, uh, their uh, accompanied minor vices. We can call them as the children of those vices. Those are our weaknesses. You have to recognize them. Our biggest uh, trouble is not recognizing, not recognizing um, the weaknesses and not recognizing the powers. And before I go on, let me answer this question that came up on the screen. The color of the company, yes, in the previous slide, pure company, color of the company. So uh, in Hindi, we say, jaisa sang, vaisa rang. Jaisa sang, vaisa rang. That means however your company is, is however you will be colored. So which color I want to be colored with? I want to be colored with the best color that is out there. And that is the color of the company of the God. That's the pure company. Satsang. They, uh, they talk about what is called as satsang. And uh, many people good, get together and then they think uh, they have a nice talk about spirituality and they call it satsang. Uh, but the real satsang is the uh, sang means company, sat means truth, the company of the truth. The real company of the truth means com connection with the Supreme Soul. There's no other truth. Every, every other being that you would connect with is not true because truth is eternal and truth cannot be, um, cannot be proved wrong, always right. So who is eternal? Only Father. We, the souls, also partially we become untrue. So if I say I am this body, after 100 years, I'm not the body. So that's, that becomes a false statement, right? I'm, I'm so-and-so, after 100 years, I'm not, I'm not there. So that's a false statement. So the true, or I can say I am a peaceful soul. That is also a wrong statement because right now I'm not a peaceful soul. I was a peaceful soul before. Because once I come into cycle, I become peaceless soul. So every statement is, is false. The only truth is Father, Supreme Soul, God. That's the only truth. So you keep the company of the truth to have that uh, purity inside. Uh, so knowing the weaknesses and knowing the, uh, knowing the powers. That's very important. We don't, we have all these things inside us, but we don't recognize. Uh, we have weaknesses and we also have uh, the understanding that I need not be using those weaknesses. I have that understanding, but I don't recognize them. I don't have the power to recognize. I have lost the ability to recognize that I, I commit so and so um, uh, negative action from time to time. For example, if somebody is, uh, if I if I have uh, um, 
a slight irritation uh, because of uh, activity of somebody, even though their activity was negative, that irritation that I created is my weakness. And I need to know that. And we, we unknowingly, we use these weaknesses all the time, many different, like compare, we compare ourselves with the others, we compete with the others, we feel disheartened from small things, we get worried by small little incidents, uh, we have revengeful uh, thoughts about, um, you know, somebody, etc. So all these, so identification of them, once I become clean and clear inside by, um, by me being the soul and connecting with the father, I will be able to identify me, my, my weaknesses very clearly. I can see it clearly. And so once I can see it, I can, uh, I can remove it. So that's the step number one. Realization has to be there, then I can remove it. And so similarly, powers. We have all these powers. It's all inside. God says that you have all the powers that you need. And I have it all inside. Peace, power, happiness, purity, tolerance, name it, we have it. But we need to recognize them. <clears throat> the power of time, uh, understanding the value of time. That's what that means, power of time. Understand the value of time. We earlier talked about we have a short lifespan and we need to use it. But power, what time is this that we need to know? This is the time when I have a chance to be in contact with the Supreme Being. That's the time we're talking, I'm talking about. And so that's the power that we need to have. Um, and let me see. Next effort, of course, this is the wrapping up. So take care of your body. You know, you become a soul. Uh, an elevated soul doesn't mean that you neglect your body. You have to take care of the uh, body, diet, exercise, sleep, all are important. Take care of your family and contacts. Uh, uh, you have all the relations with the father, but do not neglect your mother or father that are there. Okay, so you have to uh, take care of them. Do your work. You cannot say I'm spiritual being and I stop working and you have to serve. Help your feelings, good wishes for everybody. Exercise. And this is the exercise of the, um, of the mind or, your, or the soul. Just like the body needs diet, exercise, and sleep. Similarly, the soul needs the same thing, diet, exercise, and sleep. So, and the diet, uh, as we discussed earlier, is the having pure elevated thoughts. Um, uh, murli, in the form of murli that I, I listen. But any elevated thought uh, from any uh, nice scripture is, is still uh, taking that good diet. <clears throat> um, exercise, meaning using this, what I received from, uh, from uh, Supreme Father into my life and for others, that's exercising. And sleep means I need to rest myself. Uh, the, I, the soul need to rest. That means uh, I need to stop all the waste that can occur inside. And so once the waste thoughts are, are gone, then I have very peaceful, elevated thoughts and that's as good as a sleepy. And then uh, I mentioned one or two drills here. We have many drills that we learn as a spiritual student that we do uh, to um, improve our strength, our spiritual strength. Yeah, that's it. That's the last one. And I just uh, sleep hygiene that's unrelated to this topic. So I would not. So that's the end. Let us stop the. Eight twenty-two. Any question? I went on for longer time. I'm sorry.
Um, Not at all. This was so interesting. Oh, can you hear me fine? Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay, good. Um, because I've had some technical difficulties, so I want to make sure that um, you can hear me. Um, Vinod, that was really wonderful. Um, I really liked your approach and the chart that you made on the, the psychosomatic coordinates from behavior to the result in one of the um, systems, the physical systems. I think Louise Hay would really appreciate it. I know Dadi Janki often talks about, because she was the, a nurse for um, the organization in the early days. And so she began to notice that disposition would affect certain parts of the body or certain systems. Um, but I, I wanted to perhaps, because you asked a really good question, how do I know I'm a soul? Um, I just have, one, you know, just an offering here, if I may, uh, with so much respect, because I really appreciate everything that you shared and also just how you, you know, how you look at things. Um, there's different ways that we begin to kind of want to look backstage, so to speak, when we, we see that we experience and are, have a, a disillusionment about this reality. And um, one of them is, is pain and suffering. And um, when there's loss, it creates fear. And then we become greedy because we want to hold on. We want more to feel secure or have a sense of security, which only makes us more insecure. And we begin to observe how um, in this world, um, this whole game of, of gain and loss, and um, sometimes we call it hitting the brick wall, and it sort of wakes us up out of that sleep of identity to form, um, or at least a limited identity without exploring um, these, um, you know, the experience of being a spiritual entity in the physical world. Um, and so I think that once we have an experience, you know, we can't remember unless we've had an experience. How can we remember God if we've never experienced God? How can I remember I'm, I'm a soul or even remember anyone for that matter, unless I've known them and experienced them? And so when I think there are four ways, I think that people search for God or search for spirituality or truth. And for some, a lot of people, I was one of them, was, this, was hitting that brick wall. This isn't it. But others, they want to serve. They can't tolerate the um, suffering in the world. And, and so people like Buddha, for that matter, right? It, it wasn't his personal suffering, it was being a witness of others suffering that um, brought him out of that, you know, um, making the physical, the total reality. It brought him out of that to sort of awaken the whole Buddhism thing. And then, okay, so to serve, and then some people like philosophers, they wanna know, they wanna go to the ends of the universe. So they, they experiment and, and um, want to know what, who is this one that, well, who is consciousness? What is consciousness? Where is it in the body? Where, where in the brain is it? They still don't know. They have hypotheses and theories and so on. And then um, the third thing was, you know, people want to improve their character. So I can't, I, you know, like Taoism and how to get along how to find harmony. And that's a resonance. I loved how you equated with the body and the soul. And when there's an, a, a resonance, when, they're, when, when there's a resonance, because the body gives a frequency, it's just by, it's the whole, this whole world is just put together by vibration. 
But when the physical vibration, because it has a limit, no longer sustains, you know, the cell, the soul, because the soul needs love, bliss, purity, peace, and power, and it can't get it from the physical dimension. It can express it through that physical dimension. And so that awakening can happen on those four levels, either through serving, through searching for knowing, you know, or wanting to work on myself or hitting that brick wall, that, you know, awakening. And because the temporary world has a boundary, like you said, it, we enter and then we exit and that's it. And time is a factor, like you said here. Um, and um, anyway, I really, uh, I just really appreciate um, it just really, I'm sure it brings a lot of questions for people. And I, if I wanted to ask you a question, if, if we can indulge the time a little, I would love for anyone to think about it, if they have a question they'd like to ask Binod. And um, it was interesting how you were using behavior as a way of understanding the difference between body and soul. And what's, what is the difference between the behavior of either? So how does one behave as a body or how does one behave as a soul? I don't know if you want to expound on that at all, Vinod. Yes, so one um, nice example is uh, as a soul, I want to behave in a very peaceful manner um, in everything that I do. When I'm in total harmony with the body, the body actions will become peaceful. <clears throat> the same action that I can create with anxiety will now become peaceful because my behavior affects that body. I can have a tension in my mind and I prepare food or I can have peace in my mind and prepare the food. Two different, two big, uh, mm -hmm. two different aspects, things. Mm -hmm. And so it has a two different effects. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, that's, that's why we're, uh, it's important to have that harmony between the two. It is, it's so key, isn't it? I never thought of harmony, like how important it is um, to have um, so that the soul, I think, like you said, that when the soul is full, it can bring up a resonance to its environment, including the body, um, which will allow the body to get back to that normal state of vibration. Like you said, sattvic kind of elevated frequency, and it will be healthier. Is that what you were saying? Am I reading that right? Yes. Healthier. Okay. Okay. Does anyone have a question for Vinod or comment or an experience? Mukur. Uh, yes, I want to say something. So we've been taking this um, course since August. And this one was like um, the review of everything we have learned, you know, so he had put this together very beautifully. And we missed first few slides and I would like to get the whole recording if I can. And I have just one question, you know, I used to do that. I'll get up like 3 a.m. in the morning, go pray, you know, like for an hour and then come back and again sleep for, you know, hour and a half more and get up and go. Mm -hmm. But I haven't been doing that lately, you know, so I want to get now like straight so many hours of sleep, but that was the only way for me to do it. If I want to get up at 3 a.m., so, I mean, I used to get up automatically by myself, you know, I didn't have to put any alarm on. So, but I haven't done it for now, like last six months, I guess, mm -hmm. you know. So what do you do? You sleep early, then get up, do all your prayers and go to sleep again, or you get only six hours of sleep? That's my question. Yeah, um, there's something called a sleep hygiene that I follow. Mm -hmm. The four main ingredients of, of that is number one, Throughout the day, I keep uh, my um, actions, my activities, in a pure um, in a pure way. <clears throat> so, 
not going towards negativity. So my keeping my mind in a quieter mode throughout the day, mm -hmm. because negative uh, uh, thoughts will generate a faster uh, speed. And so that will drain me out. So I have to keep mm -hmm. my thoughts very clean during the day. Mm -hmm. Number two, uh, I, I need to have a, a specific uh, timetable, sleep on time, wake up on time. And uh, mm -hmm. what's the best time to go to sleep? What's the best time to wake up? It all depends on that Amrit Vela. Amrit Vela begins at two, ends at five. So mm -hmm. if I want to get up at three, for example, I need to get up, I need to go to bed at 10. Three sleep cycles is, is what most of the adults need. Uh, and each sleep cycle, roughly 100 minutes. Uh, these sleep cycles go from beta, alpha, theta, delta, and REM stage stages. Mm -hmm. So, but roughly there are sleep cycles. If you finish your first cycle before midnight, that's what you want to have. And then, so total three cycles is what most adults need. Children and old people, I'm not talking about. Uh, and so I go to bed at 10, get, get up at three. If I need to get up at two, I need to uh, go to bed at nine. I need to have those three uh, sleep cycles because well, if, I, uh, be, if I have less sleep, I will uh, become sleepy in the daytime and uh, I would not be able to focus. Uh, so uh, timing is important. Uh, diet is very important uh, with, the, with the sleep. So before I go to bed, I make. I have to make sure that uh, I have not eaten very heavy meals. Uh, I my digestion pro process is over before I go to bed. So usually three to four hours uh, uh, before I go to bed, I have to eat. Mm -hmm. So I can't eat at nine and sleep at nine thirty mm -hmm. because then the digestion will occur and my sleep will not be that deeper. So three cycles means six hours. You said each cycle is like a hundred minutes. So you give yourself like nine to two. That means uh, around about six hours. Five hours. Five hours. Five hours. Three hundred minutes. Five hours. <clears throat> five hours. And do you uh, take a nap again, or that's all you need? This is all we need. This is all I need. <clears throat> so uh, these are the three and uh, very important aspect of. Uh, uh, sleep is slow down before you go to bed. Slow down. And slow down meaning uh, when you're running a car at a very high speed and you, you can't stop all of a sudden. You have to slow down then stop. Same way. Uh, our mind is running. Uh, we're watching something, TV and all, or whatever, or whatever thoughts are occurring. And then you can't go to sleep right away. You have to slow down. For slowing down, you have to stop all the uh, electronics at least half an hour before. Um, this is what I do, and you have, you know, uh, you can do it every which way. But slowing down is important. It means have some elevated uh, uh, thoughts, or read something good, uh, or meditate. In fact, meditation is recommended before you go to bed. So 10 to 15 minutes before. You got to do that. And then uh, clean up before you go to bed. Slow down before going to bed, clean up before. Clean up, clean up means uh, you write down all the accounts of, of what you did. Write down very honestly. Uh, mm -hmm. this, is, this is what I did. This is what I should not have done, etc. Clean. So all, everything written down, and then give it to Supreme Father and make yourself very light and then go to bed as a soul. So, and then you, you know, the practice of going to the subtle world and sleep there is also there. So these are some of the things that I we follow. It's- Yeah. Yeah, it was easy for me to just sleep five, six hours and get up and stay on the go always, you know, but it seemed like lately it was hard, you know, to get like five, six hours and then you're up, then you're tired, you know. So, but that those are good tips, you know. It was excellent. I really enjoyed it. It was very good. Thank you.
Thank you for your question. Um, does anyone else have a question? Or you could type it in the chat. I have a question. Can you hear me? Yes, perfect. Mm -hmm. uh, I did hear about the behavior and can you explain how does the attitude and personality in comparison with the behavior acts for a human being? Yes. Can you repeat that again? Like how can... Uh -huh. Like how can you... Or like you understand how behavior works, but how does the personality and attitude of a human being changes or how does we control it? So perhaps how does these different patterns develop and then how can we change them perhaps? Right. Is... Okay, Vinod. Mm. So uh, it is about your uh, stage. Uh, as we uh, looked at how the our personality affects our behavior, and that's the uh, chart that we saw. Now, how we can improve our personality? <clears throat> uh, we just have to simply elevate our stage. In that in that uh, chart or table, we I mentioned that initially there is a uh, um, awareness that leads to a feeling that leads to your uh, feeling, which is a stage, and that leads to everything else. So stage is way high. So you need to elevate your stage. You need to have that uh, awareness. First of all, you need to have awareness that you are a soul. You are a, a, a sweet soul, for example. I'm a sweet soul. Then my feeling will be sweetness. And that will change my behavior in a good way. So if I have some negative uh, uh, behavior and I want to change my, um, uh, that behavior, I need to practice of elevating my stage. And it not just will happen one time, but if the more you practice, the more it happens. Within a short time, you will see that you are now a, a very peaceful, loveful person instead of a um, nervous type of person. Thank you. I will definitely do that. I do have a concern, another question related to that. Uh, because I, I used to lose my mind on my kids and my teenager kid, especially. And I heard some of the videos from Brahma Kumari and I decided to use that word that my soul is on journey. Every soul is a journey. And whenever she used to do something wrong, instead of scolding her or shouting at her, I started thinking soul on journey and then eventually I stopped being mad or reacting. So that did help me. And I think that can change my behavior and attitude if slowly, slowly. Very important when you interact with the other souls to have that very high, um, very good feeling, most important. When, when we interact with others, that we need to have a good feeling for them. I cannot, if I have a very good feeling, uh, then it will help that soul also. If some soul is, uh, uh, has uh, some negative behavior, my having good feeling for them will give them that power to come out of what, the, where they are. And so have good thoughts, good wishes, and pure feelings. So have nothing of their action affect you negatively and have very positive thoughts for them. You need not be telling them how they need to behave, behave but you need to have good thoughts inside and let that thought um, affect the environment and affect mm -hmm. that uh, person. Okay. So you mean to say without communicating the thought goes from one mind to another mind? That should be the larger way of communication because the moment you start to explain to somebody, you come into a body conscious stage. And once you are in a body conscious stage, the communication stops. The other soul does not get it. You have to have a very high um, a stage to be able to communicate. Of course, as a uh, parent or friend or brother, I need to, uh, if I need to say something, I can, but then uh, 
the larger way of communication should be inside, I think. It's a lovely, very good question, Citra. Uh, is it Citra, how you, we say your name? It's Chitra. Oh, Chitra, okay. Beautiful name, perfect name, Chitra. Thank you. You know, it, it's interesting and how you want to know. And I think it's, it's great the example you gave in creating harmony with your relationship with your kids. Um, I find that when we have a bigger picture, when we see them as souls, it allows us to, uh, to access different behavior within us. We're not going to keep just doing what we've always done, so to speak, right? I think that's great. So thank you for Absolutely. sharing. Thank you, thank you. Uh -huh. And uh, Jim? Hello, Om Shanti. Hi, Om Shanti. Hi everybody. Yes. Uh, how lovely to spend time with you this evening and to uh, have a chance to elevate our stage. I was, uh, <clears throat> when I was younger, it helped me to uh, think of something my mother said is that there may be an angel watching you, an angel in our midst, so to speak, an angelic quality there. And it helps me, I'm in medicine too. And it helps me to know that uh, I'm not alone. It kind of keeps me on guard and, and raises my stage uh, considerably because mm -hmm. I'm not just, and, and it reminds me to be soul conscious as we say, to remember who I am. Um, I wanted to ask a question, but I don't want to go too deep with things, but um, has your experience of God uh, changed deeper over time's question for you? Yes. Um, actually, it was once, um, it's one event. Once you know God, you know God. Mm -hmm. You cannot gradually know God more. You right. know him. Once you love him, you love him. Of course, your love grows, your understanding of what he has to say grows. Mm -hmm. But you know him, you know him. So that's why um, uh, there is a saying, how much time it takes for a soul to change. An instant, actually. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's uh, one of the poems where they say, Manushya se devta kye karatna lagi bar. That means, how long did it take for the God to change the human being into elevated human being. Mm -hmm. Not much, very short time. And the only time limiting factor was knowing God. Once you know him, you're on the path of elevation. Mm -hmm. Very nice, yeah. It's like uh, there's no end to the purity from my experience. <laughs> <laughs> it just keeps getting deeper as long as I can handle it. It's just, it's just, it's more there, it's more, uh, lovely. I'm so glad to be here with you all, by the way. Yes, thank you, Jim and Deborah. So good to see you both. Thank you. Thank you. Very nice class. Yeah. Good points. I like the way it was structured and good things. You know, we've heard them before, but always good just to keep hearing those and it sinks in deeper. So thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Very practical. Yeah. Thank you, Jim and Deborah. Mm -hmm. Also, uh, Balraj, you were, or uh, I don't know if it was Balraj, but you were raised your hand. You had a question. I was just checking something. It clicked there, so I took it off. Just oh, one I, thing. I missed, I missed the beginning of the uh, talk, so I would like to get the first few. Oh, yeah. Just, Thank you for reminding me. If anyone would like a copy of tonight's class, just leave me your email in the chat. And you can okay. do that privately. Um, if you could, you know, send that to either, uh, you'll see BK Elizabeth there or Anabuti. Um, and then I can, um, whoever wants a copy of this, I'm happy to send it. Just uh, let me know in the chat, okay? So let's close with a meditation. Can we do that? Um, 
Uh, Vinod, thank you so much. Uh, really, a, a just a very heartfelt, uh, lovely evening. Thank you so much. So let us all sit in silence and uh, <clears throat> meditate for a few minutes. And um, the purpose of this meditation would be to re-emerge our uh, capability of uh, um, transforming um, ourselves and to uh, bring that harmony in the world. And also to, uh, to become happy uh, and healthy and wealthy or becoming Sukhi. So uh, this body is not me. This role that I'm playing is also not me. And uh, anything that this mind has to uh, say about me is also not me. I have a deep faith in, in the Father and deep faith that he, uh, he has come now to give me the knowledge. And I have this faith because I have felt his love and I, um, I, am, I am always in contact with him somehow. And so this faith uh, makes me feel his presence. And I know that he, I can feel his, that he's here. And uh, that bright presence of the Father opens my third eye of the intellect. And when I see, when I see him, I know that I am a soul. This realization, deep realization that I am a soul that comes when I see him. And as a soul, all my attention is towards that supreme soul. Mm. And all my relations are with him. Everything that I do now as a soul has to do with me, the soul, with that supreme father, or my story which is totally different than the story of this body. This transformation separates me from this physical world and empowers me. realize that I am a soul that has descended or incarnated in this body. And this body is a living temple. And I shine my light and purify this temple. And the light goes outwards into the world. I realize that God the Father has now come to teach and 
give me the imperishable jewels of knowledge. And I realize how important I become, how valuable I become due to that. And with that realization, I become an instrument of the God. I serve the world. This world becomes my service place. My relatives become the souls to whom I serve. There's no bondage in whatever action that I do. All my actions are now elevated karma. I feel light and I feel free. And I feel close to the Supreme Father. Om Shanti. Om Shanti. Om Shanti, thank you. Om Shanti, thank you, Baba. Thank you, brother.